Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Sayyidi Dimardan Azmi. Welcome to my channel. In this lecture, we will learn some basics about polar coordinates and then we will learn something, some basics about polar integrals, how we can evaluate polar integrals, how we can convert Cartesian integral into polar integral. So first of all, we must know what are the polar coordinates. Polar coordinate is a system used to locate a point in two dimension plane. A point in a polar coordinate is represented as R and theta where R is the distance from the origin to the point and theta is the angle measured counterclockwise from the x-axis. In two-dimension plane, here you can see if this is the point P, then what is R? R is the distance of this point from the origin in straight line. And in order to calculate theta, we will make an arc with this line and this arc will provide you angle theta in polar coordinates. Next, the relationship between polar coordinate and Cartesian coordinates is x is equal to r cos theta, y is equal to r sin theta. Conversely, the relationship between Cartesian and polar coordinate is r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared and theta is equal to tan inverse of y over x. In the next step, we will learn a generic formula for polar coordinates. This is how a polar integral should look like. Double integral over the region R, f of R of theta, dA. What it means? This double integral is given in the form of R and theta. And here in this double integral for a given region R, how we can calculate our limits? For this purpose, please note that in Cartesian system, we can take dA is equal to dx dy or dA is equal to dy dx. But in polar coordinates, we will always take dA as r dr d theta. So from here, we, will, we can see r is our inner variable and theta is our outer variable. So limits of r may be constant, may be variable, but the limits of theta are always constant. In the next step, we will learn how we can evaluate the limits of r. For this purpose, I have created an example here. From the left side, I will explain the limits of R and from the right side, I will explain limits of theta. So first of all, how we can evaluate limits of R? For this purpose, we will pass an arrow through this region from the origin like this. Look again, like this. The boundary through which this arrow enters in our region will provide you the lower limit of R and the boundary through which this arrow exit will provide you the upper limit of R. Now, for the limits of theta, I will explain the limits of theta from here, from the right side of the diagram, so that you can distinguish between limits of R and theta. So, the limits of R here, if the lower limit, if the lower boundary have an equation R is equal to G1 of theta and upper limit have the equation G2 of theta, then the limits of R are R is equal to G1 of theta, R is equal to G of T of theta. Next, for the limits of theta, as theta is our outer variable, the limits of theta are always constant and it is measured as counterclockwise angle. These angles are measured from the starting point and ending point of the region in the counterclockwise direction with positive x-axis. Now, please focus here in counterclockwise direction. In counterclockwise direction, our region start from here. So what I will do, I will join this point or this starting point with origin and then I will measure an angle here. This angle will provide us the lower limit for theta, which is alpha here. Similarly, in counterclockwise direction, our region ends here at this point. So I will join this point with origin with the help of a line and then I will measure this angle. I am going to say this angle as beta. So this angle will provide us the upper limit of theta. So lower limit and upper limit. How we can calculate? from In counterclockwise direction, the point at which our region starts and the counterclockwise direction at which our region ends will provide you the lower and upper limit of theta, you will measure these angles. Next, 
In order to calculate polar integral, we must know some basics about circle. This is a general equation of circle. And if in this circle, we take center at origin, then we have this equation, x square plus y square is equal, equal to r square. This equation represents a circle whose center is at origin and radius is r. Now, if we solve this equation for x, then we have equation number 3 and 4. And if we solve this equation number 2 for y, we have this equation 5 and 6. Equation 2 represents a complete circle whose center is at origin. And now we will learn which part of the circle are represented by equation number 3, 4, 5, and 6. For this purpose, I will plot some diagrams. Here, first of all, x is equal to minus square root of r square minus y square is a part of the circle where x is negative. It means it represents a semicircle in the left half plane or in third and second quadrant. Similarly, x is equal to square root of r square minus y square whole square root will provide us the part of the circle where x is positive or it is a semicircle in the right half plane or you can say it is the part of the circle in the first and fourth quadrant. Similarly, y is equal to square root of r minus x square will provide you a circle where value of y is positive. Y is positive in the upper half plane or in first and second quadrant. Similarly, y is equal to minus square root of r square minus x square whole square root would provide you a circle, part of the circle where y is negative, means in the lower half plane or in third and fourth quadrant. After knowing these curves, we can move towards the calculation of Cartesian integrals. Now, for this purpose, we will learn question number 9 from exercise 15.4. What is the statement? Change the Cartesian integral into an equivalent polar integral. For this purpose, integral given to us is limit from minus 1 to 1, limit from 0 to 1 minus x square square root y dy dx. Here, in order to convert this Cartesian integral into an equivalent polar integral, first of all, we will draw the region of integration. Here, the limits of x are minus 1 and 1, where x equal to minus 1 is this vertical line. x equal to 1 is a vertical line. This line will pass to the point where the value of x is minus 1 and 1 along x-axis. Here, y equal to 0 is equation of x-axis and y is equal to square root of 1 minus x square is equation of semicircle with radius 1 and center at origin in the upper half plane. In the next step, I have drawn these boundaries. Here, this is our x-axis, y-axis. This is our origin. From here, you can see, since y-axis is not involved in my boundaries, so I have make it dotted so that we are not get confused with this y-axis. Now, y equal to 0 is equation of x-axis. x equal to 1 is an equation of vertical line which passes the point where the value of x is 1. Similarly, x equal to minus 1 is a vertical line which passes the point where the value of x is minus 1. Next, y is equal to square root of 1 minus x square. Whole square is equation of semicircle in upper half plane whose radius is 1. So from since in this circle, our center coincides with origin. So the distance of origin from the boundaries of the circle is always equal to the radius, which is equal to 1. Now, our region of integration is this whole semicircle. So in the next step, I have highlighted it. After highlighting the region of integration, I will calculate the limits of R and theta from here because we have to convert this integral into polar coordinates. To convert into polar coordinates, I will replace dy dx with r dr d theta always. Now the limits of r will be calculated as, I will pass an arrow from the origin crossing the region. You can pass this arrow in any direction. 
Now, please note that if your origin is involved in your region, the limit, then the lower limit of R is always zero. Now, from center or from the origin towards boundary, the distance of each point is equal to the radius of circle. So the point at which our arrow exit is the semicircle. And at the boundary of the semicircle, the distance of every point from the origin is equal to radius, which is equal to one. So the limits of R here are zero to one. So in the next step, these are the limits zero to one. Now for the limits of theta, our region start from this point. At this point, the angle with x-axis is zero. And in the counterclockwise direction, when move at this point where our region ends, the angle is 180, which we can write as pi. So the limits of theta are zero to pi. After calculating the limits, we can evaluate this polar integral as since our inner variable is r, so first of all, we will integrate with respect to r. In order to calculate this integral, we need to know these two formula. I am going to apply the first formula on r. The integration of r with respect to r is r square over 2 for the given limit 0 to 1. In the next step, applying the limits, upper limit minus lower limit with the help of fundamental theorem of calculus, I will get 1 over 2. 1 over 2 is constant. We can take an outside. And then we are left with limit from 0 to pi d theta. Now, in, in order to evaluate this integral, we will apply second formula here. If we match these things, the value of k is 1 and x is equivalent to theta. So by this formula, we will get its answer as theta for the given limit 0 to pi. In the next step, we have applied fun fundamental theorem of calculus, upper limit minus lower limit, pi minus 0. And from here, we will get our answer as pi by 2. I hope you like this video please like subscribe and share this content with your fellows thank you so much for watching allah hafiz